hello guys in this video i am going to show you a very nifty very useful ai power tool called as llama fs llama fs i believe adds a real value it is a self-organizing file manager it automatically renames and organizes your file based on their contents and well-known conventions for example type it supports many kinds of files and even images through moondream and audio through whisper Llama FS runs in two modes as a batch job or batch mode and an interactive daemon which is called as watch mode. In batch mode, you can send a directory to Llama FS and it will return a suggested file structure and organize your files. Whereas in watch mode, Llama FS starts a daemon or background process that watches your directory. It intercepts all the file system operations, updates and uses your most recent edits in context to proactively learn and how so you don't learn predict how you rename the file. If you create a folder for example for your files and start moving one to three files in it, Llama FS will automatically create and move the right ones. How good is that? Now you can use it with Grox API or you can use it with Olama. In this video, I am going to install it locally and then we will play around with it. So let's get right into it. Let me take you to my local system. This is my local system where I am running Ubuntu 22.04. And on this VM, I have one GPU card, which is a 6000 from NVIDIA RDX and it has 48 GB of VRAM. Both of them have been generously sponsored by our friends at Mast Compute. So if you are looking to rent a GPU on discounted rate, so I will drop the link in video's description with a discounted coupon code. If you use that, you will get 50% of discount. I have been using their VMs and their GPU and the performance is sublime. The rates are very, very affordable. Okay, let's go back to our terminal. Let me clear the screen. And another thing I would highly suggest is that you should have Conda installed, which will keep everything nice and simple and separate from your local system. I already have this Conda installed. Let me clear the screen and now let me create a Conda environment. I'm just creating it with Python 3.11 Llama FS. Just press Y here and enter and it is going to create the virtual environment for us. Let's activate it by doing conda activate and llama fs and you will see that appearing in a parenthesis on the left hand side let me clear the screen let's git clone that repo of llama fs and i will drop the link to it in video's description that is done let's go to llama fs let me show you the contents of it so these are the contents of it as it uses fast api on the back end next step let's install all the prerequisites I'm just doing pip install dash r requirements.txt. This takes a bit of a time, so let's wait for it to finish. Shouldn't take too long. All the requirements are installed now. Let me clear the screen and all the installation is complete here. Now, in order to serve the application or run the application, you would need to use this fast API dev server.py because we are already in that directory. So let me run it. And you see that it has now started the whole application on the port 8000 and it is running there. So let me take you to my terminal and then I will access it locally. Let me go there. So you see this is where it is running hello world. I just accessed it on local host port 8000 and it has shown that it is running. You can also check the raw data and the headers if you like. Also, if I take you back to my terminal, you will see that it has written uh, HTTP 200, which means success. Also, if you look at it, it is saying that it, is, it will be watching these directories. So currently I'm in Llama FS. So as soon as you move something there, it is going to do some uh, changes there and it will, because it is in the watch mode at the moment. And just to show you that in action, so if I go to another terminal window and I just created this file ss.py here and as soon as I created it in the other window, you see that this uh, llama fs was watching it 
it has given this warning that it detected changes in ss.py and it is reloading it so for example if i uh, make it another change and i will do it in in my another terminal window maybe i'll take you there we let's let me clear the screen let me do ls dash ltr i'll just say um maybe touch my foo dot pi and then let's go back to the other one there you see so it has reloaded it now it is checking it out and if i go here and do ls dash ltr so my foo is there and if i just uh, so you you can um put any file there but the thing which i noticed that when i put in like text file it doesn't do anything so if i just say bar.txt and if i go back i don't see that it gets triggered here which is interesting so i think what it is doing because it understands the context of this repo so it is only looking at the file file but we already have the requirement.txt so that is um, fairly interesting observation and in my opinion the real um, benefit of this tool comes into play when you embed it in your application for example this is um, their docs for the fast api where they have this swagger api where you can use some of the get post functions in your own application and let me quickly show you one of the examples which you can readily use from um, their own github repo so if you look at this example, this is being used with Grok, whereas you would need to go to Grok's website and grab the API. I think you will get some free credits if you want to play around. But more importantly, you would need to define these sort of functions in your application, like class watcher. You can grab these ones and put it in your application. And then this is the handler, which is doing the watch directory. And then on deleted, on created, these are the functions which you need to define it, what you want to do with it because it all depends upon your own logic. How do you want to rename it? Where do you want to move it? And that sort of stuff. It's quite flexible. So once you have it, you can also define some of the prompts. And then from there, you can also define a create file, a tree directory where you want to create it. And then um, you can simply run this voucher. And if you want to run it in Colab, you can also run it but of course you would need to have a good gpu because it seems it is using llama 370 billion here but i have uh, run it with llama with uh, mistral model on with all llama 7 billion so it should be okay but with i think with grok's api the performance might be better but it might be expensive anyway so that's it just a quick overview of this tool i hope that you enjoyed it let me know what do you think. I will drop the link to this GitHub repo in video's description. Interesting tool, by the way, but could be improved in my opinion. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're already subscribed, then please share it among your network as it helps a lot. Thanks for watching.